All right, what's up, everybody? Cooper Head Nordy here with you, and today we are going to talk about Pig Pen, Ron McKernan. Today would be the day that he passed away. 49 years ago. Let me get in my comfy chair that I always sit in. I got this cranked up loud today because it's Pig Pen, and I'm just going to talk over it. So, Pig Pen was born in 1945. Sadly, he died in 1973, as most everyone knows. Uh, he was a big Rainier beer drinker, and I'm giving Pigpen a cheers by drinking a Rainier in his memory today. Um, what we're going to talk about is Pigpen's early start. Real briefly, like he started with a dad who was a blues DJ on the radio station, so he got into all this kind of music. Um, ah, just influenced him completely as a kid, so he started singing it. As he grew older, he just started singing all these songs. All the early bands, especially from the 60s, the Stones and the Beatles, were all cover bands, as were the dead for a while in the very beginning. And because Pigpen had the natural talent of singing as well as he did, he became the main focus and the nucleus in the beginning of the upfront person, if you will, and the grateful that the front man, the, the person who would get out there while the rest of the band was jamming and doing it behind him. Jerry and Bobby clearly learned to sing, even though they could sing decently, they learned to sing as Pigpen already knew how to sing. So, um, a unique and dynamic thing between all those guys, but Pigpen led the way for sure in the first five, six years. Definitely seven years. Most definitely. Um, Pigpen got his name, I guess they used to call him Blue Ron. And he got his name just from being scruffy and you know, not as not as kempt as everyone else, and just looking a little bit gnarlier than everybody else. He was the first one to really, like, start running a vest and crazy patches. The patch on his shoulder said, smile in service. I made my, I made a, um, a gas station uniform for Hollywood Dead & Company um, uh, last year. And it said, smile in service on the back, and I stole that from Big Ben's patch on his sleeve. Um, I don't know if that was a sexual innuendo, a reference, but it sure sounded like it. Unless there was a smile and service gas station somewhere back in the day. I don't know, but that's what I think. And that's another thing. When I started getting into the dead, it was Pigpen that got me going. That's what hyped me up. His voice, his... I was a kid, you know, I was 12, 13 years old, 12 years old. And his sexual innuendos that I'm a king bee. Good morning, little schoolgirl. All the different stuff that he rocked. Hard to handle. Those were all innuendos that a kid like me was just, and everyone else was just like, wow. Like, this guy's talking about stuff that is taboo. And, and oh, he's, he's, there's an underlying message here. And it was cool to hear that underlying message because it was just fun as a kid. So, um, I love that, that stuff. I fucking love it. Um... What I mentioned a minute ago about how gnarly Pig looked. See, he's got his vest on, he's got his, his hat, round glasses, leather jacket under the vest, or jean jacket, just looking seriously gnarly. Like, he was the one who started that whole, like, I'm an edgy looking dude, you know, in the dead. Like, everyone else kind of was flourishing and bright, and he was just like, nah. I'm running it like this. This is how you do it. This picture, Marianne Mayer photo from 1972, two years before, or a year before Pigpen died, and the last time he got to go on Dead Tour, pretty much, outside of a few shows in the States, but within a year of this, has helped decline seriously. But I love this photo, it's amazing. And then, one of my favorite, favorite photos, another another Marianne Mayer photo, and this was in the um, the flyer notes that came with Europe 72, was this picture of Pig, I hope it's not reflecting, where he's cold outside wearing like a trench coat and a baseball hat and some crazy Elvis glasses, but I just 
love that photo, and I put it in a little frame. I had some damaged, beat up old notes from Europe 72, so I chopped them up and threw them in there. But I just happen to love that photo. It's probably my favorite one, ironically enough. But also, my good friend Stagger out in, I think it's the Carolinas, north or south, I'm not sure, Stagger, but gave me this. Big Ben says it's okay, and this is going on my new vest. I don't know if anybody noticed that I got a new vest in the last bunch of months, but my old, old one literally turned to threads. But this is going to go on the back at some point. It takes me time to get there, but Big Ben says it's okay. And if you ever saw this show where, what was it, Marsha and Brian, I think, Pig hooked him up in the audience, and tell him Pig Ben says it's okay. One of the best live versions that Pig ever did. Pig Pen, I wish he was around. What would he would be do? What would he be doing now? Where would he have like? How expansive would his songs have gotten? Would he have started writing more stuff for the dead? I mean, it's hard to say. You know, it really, really is. But uh, just an incredible, incredible talent. Here's to Ron McKernan, aka Pig Pen. We all loved him. Just incredible. He loved Rainier and Dickle Whiskey. I love Rainier. Drink one for him. Remember him? Here's the shit. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you in a bit. We're out. Listening to Pig Pan. Thank you.